For those of you that may be launching Bridge and want to have an idea of where those settings are visually, I've screenshotted them in the slideshow. But again, it's not a requirement to launch Bridge just yet because we're going to talk about that in Chapter 3. But if you are interested, this is a really good way to sync um, your settings across your Adobe programs. The next step in color management is to, to assign a document color profile. The last step I would recommend, including, including as part of your default color management process, is assigning a document color profile. Files can have their own settings that don't necessarily match all of the other settings that you set in steps one through three of this color management process. Assigning a document color profile ensures Photoshop, your display, your printer, and now your file are all working toward the same goals. The steps that you need to use for assigning a document color profile are to open a new file or image. If a prompt appears, make a decision about the document's color profile. That will happen if you open up an image that doesn't match the settings that you've set. And it'll tell you, this is different from what you said that you want. So what do you want to do? Do you want to keep these settings? Do you want to override the settings? Do you want to make these the new default settings, etc.? If a prompt does not appear, you can choose the Edit menu and Assign Profile. The Assign Profile dialog box will appear. There will be three choices. You can choose to Do Not Color Manage, the existing Photoshop color space, or you can uh, use a drop down to choose the specific color profile that you want for your file. In general, you will choose the second option since it matches your previous color settings. And so even if you open up an image and you don't get a prompt, the first handful of times you start working in Photoshop, you should go to edit and assign profile and double and triple check that you have the correct settings that you want for the project. And that is the North American Prepress 2 um, color space. And then I want you to make sure that when you're working in RGB images, you're using Adobe RGB settings. So those, those, um, those steps are screenshotted here. If you go to the edit menu towards the bottom, you can choose assign profile, very similar to where you chose color settings in the last step. Um, you may also get a prompt automatically and the prompt will look like the prompt on the left hand side here. And it will basically tell you something is different about this based on the settings that you said that you wanted. And I would generally choose the second option, convert the document's color to the working space. And the working space is what you assigned as your color space. Um, if it doesn't work for you, um, that prompt doesn't come up, you can always go to the edit menu, choose assign profile. When you do that, you'll have those three options that I talked about in the little bulleted list. And so you can say, I want you to say, make it Adobe RGB because that's what is set on your color space because this is an RGB image I have open. If for some reason there was, if there was a reason for it to be different than the default, and for Art1280 there is never a reason because we're only going to use Adobe RGB, but if there was, that's when you would come down to profile and on this drop down menu you would choose the color profile that matches your project. And you can see these, these uh, RGB um, profiles here, they match those gamuts that I showed you several slides ago, right? So we have uh, Pro Photo RGB, and if we go back all the way in the slideshow to this diagram of the gamuts, you can see Photo Pro RGB has the largest gamut of any of the ones listed on my little slideshow here. And so if you had a photo printer that was possible to output a Pro Photo RGB image, you may want to use that profile. That is all I have for the color management section of the class.